So for those that are joining, hey, this is the Microsoft Community Office Hours, and uh, we're, we uh, sometimes randomly appear in your live feed here on Facebook, or the Book of Faces, Book of Faces, that's the formal name. Uh, it's fancier that way. It's more refined if we refer to it as Book of Faces. But at 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. every Monday, uh, answering questions that are posted to the Office 365 community page on Facebook and elsewhere. There's the Teams page. I've pulled some as well. And uh, hey, Neil, since you've been gone, we now have an email and we point people that, and I'll, I need to add you to the DL. Um, That's what you wanted, Neil. Yeah, yeah. you really want more, that. E more email. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Remember well, it's to create a rule. Uh, but it, you, if you have a question, you want to post it to the group, you can reach us at uh, at office hours at collabtalk.com. And uh, we'll, uh, we might have some other people joining this morning. So a couple other MVPs that uh, said that they want to jump into this. I know that we have, uh, so Rodrigo and Susan and Renee that are watching the live stream. So hello, and a handful of others. So we're live streaming in two locations now. Um, so feel free, ask questions if you've got questions, but anything else? going on anything come up big last week weekend i guess not i don't know you're super choppy I, for me so I, yeah. yeah everything just went yeah, uh, 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 slowing down yeah i'm going to i'm going to close down some things hang on yeah so Talk so amongst I, yourselves. I asked like, you not to use your dial. I asked you not to use your dial-up modem for this. Uh, yeah, yeah. Close down other. No, not. I'm wrong closing line. my 1400 open edge tabs. I'll close them all down. Yeah. There you go. Yes, it's not your fault, Neil. Though this is the first time we've had this happen, and it's the first time I've seen your face on here, so there may be some. Uh, <laughs> Eric, that's so, that's so rude. <laughs> It uh, hurts so because it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Truth hurts. All right. <laughs> Closing everything in. I've got too many GitHub tabs open as well. Yeah. So, so gentlemen, uh, you know, any questions that have come up that uh, are kind of top of mind that you'd like to discuss? I'm not caught up on everything yet. So I've got like 400 emails to go through. I'm sure there will be huh. a question in there somewhere. Just not ready for that. Well, I've got a list of questions. While we're waiting, if anything comes in, I'm kind of uh, monitoring here. Did that not paste? What is going on? Hang on. Total system failure. Uh, if somebody has the the list of questions that, that that went to the DL. What's the first question on there? That's what I tried to open, and for some reason, it just it, it says it's a question from um, Robert. It says, "Why is Christian Buckley so darn handsome?" <laughs> You got the wrong list, Chris. Sorry, that's, I'm sorry. That's, <laughs> he, he said that to me. Christian said that well, late last night. Uh, yeah, that's, that, that, that's Christian. <laughs> posted his own, his own yeah. questions. But uh, hey, this wait, is a wait, question. It was t-shirt designs. So I've got the, as you can probably see. Oh, now Sean just stood up and you disappeared when you stood up. The AI. <laughs> I it was, love it. It was a together mode. New t-shirts. Yeah. Yeah. So I've got the, of course, the classic, just the Stark. I don't know if you can see the logo. Oh, yeah. And everything just hung up again. Yep, and now it's back. It's just it's yeah, going we, bad. Boink, boink, boink. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I just shut down Exchange, too, so... You shut down exchange. Isn't that like oh, no. shutting down the internet? <laughs> <laughs> Can he do that? <laughs> Who gave him that power? <laughs> well, Eric started on this. Why don't we uh, let's jump to that first the question? So Danny asked, uh, "Hi everyone, quick question: Is there a way to give someone delegated permissions to a user's calendar with viewing description and details, but without access to attachments?" <laughs> Uh, I have a clue. <laughs> that's odd. I don't think so. Wow. So that's... when you say view, view detail and 
What was the other thing? View detail. It, it, so uh, with like, the description, description and detail, so you can see the email, get access, but um, oh, to or in in the calendar, calendar. You can see the items, right. but not attachments to calendar items. Yeah, he basically wants access to everything except the attachments, which you cannot do. No, yeah. that's a little yeah. too granular. The only yeah. way that you could do that is if you had document level permissions on those items. So if you were so concerned about people having access to the calendar view and you just wanted to see the description, then lock down the the document that you attach. That's the only way you so can do I, it. So, but like the document I, would still appear if it was there. By attaching it to the to calendar. Open. By calendar. attaching it to the calendar. It's going to end up broadening that permission set once you attach it. So you could attach a link to a, a doc link. and then yes. control it that way. Right. Or don't attach the document at all. Include that separately or share it separately. That's probably the easiest option. Share a link to that private channel or to that list or that. Yeah, exactly. but it's going to require a user behavior change. Yeah, yeah. Problem solved. User replaced. <laughs> That's right. Um, all right. Um, I don't know how you pronounce that name. Ove. Ove. Um, do any of you have experience setting up encryption using a private key for Microsoft 365? Yes. All right, the next question. Next question, thank you. <laughs> so Should, so we'll be here all week, key. folks. Shouldn't have to. I mean, that's the benefit of using Microsoft 365 versus something like PGP. You don't have to manage your keys. Or am I simplifying it too much here? Is, well, is there, you don't, you don't there, have to, but some customers want to. Right. Oh, okay. Scenario. We do have the concept of bring your own key um, and the concept of the lockbox. So that's that's an option. Um, but <clears throat> do you need it? I would say, you know, even though, okay, I work for Microsoft, put a Microsoft hat on, do you need it? Does it make you more secure? No. Because our, our own service engineers and teams don't have access to the keys anyway. It's not like there's a bunch of keys somewhere that we can, you know, we can leverage and, and, and access customers' data. We just don't have that. That's not an option. So my takeaway from that is Neil can help them. <laughs> Send an email to Neil. Ping. Ring me. Reach out. Reach out. Don't call me. <laughs> Ping me. Drop me an email. Oh, once I got once I got on the DL, I'll be able to answer. So. On the Good download. Good value add there, Riz. Nice value add there. I tried to hit mute. It just didn't have. I didn't have enough time. I'm sorry. I apologize. That, that's a lie. Riz is never a value <laughs> add. Oh, Neil, you were talking about hurting feelings earlier. Was that? <laughs> and like I said earlier, it hurts because it's true. That's right. <laughs> just hurts uh, to remember, Sean. Sean, life lesson: value add is different to everybody. Understood. That's true. You can tell who has the psychologist for a wife. <laughs> uh, deep. It's yeah, deep. It's very deep. All right. Uh, Angelina asks a question. Uh, in need of some ideas. You got lots of those. Well, we're the idea guys. Uh, we are returning in person at the start of the school year, but know that we may have to return to remote instruction or a hybrid model. If things change, it's really interesting, by the way, just as kind of a sidebar, I've got an elementary school like outside the street, just right across the back street of our garage. So behind our house, Sex and they, allow you to, to they allow you to the live farther that away. I'm not surprised wow. by that one. No, but uh, it, there it's, are it's laws against that in Ontario. Oh, sorry. So brand new, brand new school. It's uh, so we know, you know, obviously the expanded neighborhood that's here. We know a lot of people around here. And so watching kind of the conversations in the neighborhood Facebook group about what's happening in school and they're doing kind of an abbreviated, uh, you know, coming back online as well, which is, Interesting. I, my my thought, and no matter where you stand on the the issue of 
of kids starting back up in school, the the idea of the hybrid model for any working parent just sucks. So you, I, I, I know it just sucks across the board, like, but uh, you know, it, doing all in or, or or partial, it's just a hot mess. So I don't know if you guys are dealing with that where where you live. You yeah, know, the hybrid stuff, but yeah, the school system here. Um they've given kids and families the option of going entirely virtual or some sort of hybrid staged approach according to uh, what the governor Ohio sets out as uh, acceptable. So, and that's gonna involve going back a certain number of days during the week. And I think they're gonna keep the individual cohorts together so as to minimize uh, external exposures, so. Yeah, it it's going to be difficult, but it, you know I understand the need for socialization, and my kids actually want to do it. We gave them the option, and they're like they want to see some of their friends. Yeah, yeah, the schools here are going back. They they they'll be back. Um, I think in a few weeks' time, actually. Uh, so, but they're going to do it small. They're going to do like one class at a time, yeah. and then we're all kind of rolling. See how it, see how it works out. Yeah, that makes sense. Unfortunately, yeah. anticipate a big increase in infections which is unfortunate hopefully that doesn't happen but this is where yeah. it is and i think a lot of it in terms of in terms of going back to school is very much dependent on you know what fits in with a parent's lifestyle as well right if, if your if your company insists you have to be back in the office then that hybrid model is not going to work for you anymore True right it'll be tough that's that's the difficult aspect of that well the rest of her question uh so she's talking about the hybrid model in anticipation of this we're asking all teachers to begin using microsoft teams on day one um, not for all instruction, but to start using it. So if we do move to remote learning, teachers and students will feel comfortable. Does anyone have any suggestions of activities or ways that virtual learning can be incorporated into in-person learning? So I know it's kind of a big question out there, but I don't know if you guys have any specific. I, I'd, I'd like to. I'd like to ask the, the the rest of the people on this call, the the four of you. What when you say virtual to in person, what does that mean? What does that mean to you? Well, as, as far incorporate as incorporate virtual to in person. So, I, at the very least, I expect that much like we're doing here, it's set up some sort of um, experience where the folks online can interact with the kids in the class. Mm -hmm. at, at the very least. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be the the most difficult. So I'm interested, I don't know if you guys heard uh, that uh, about the, I think it's all announced. I think I can talk about it. Hang on, let me just, let me make sure I can talk about it really quick. Hold, hold on, <laughs> sorry. Uh, shall, we, shall we play some music while you check out whether or not you're about to breach your NDA? Uh, uh, no, it's not. It's I think not Hal's an, got uh, Jeopardy going for us. It's, it's a friend right. NDA, not an NDA. It's not a Microsoft thing. I just okay. want to make sure that it's, uh, okay, That's no, good, good it is. Uh, I was about no, to ask if it's announced. We're going to be guilty by okay. So, so the North, so it's the North American <laughs> Collaboration Summit. You know, uh, Rackley's, oh, Rack Rackley's. Uh, is uh, just announced um, that it's going to be uh, moving to hybrid. So it's it's kind of a similar you know set question here. So here you have an event which typically I don't know what kind of numbers he pulls in four or five hundred people to that event in person. Yeah, um, that's about right. They're, they're obviously, they've, they pushed back the date from earlier in the year to the fall, uh, and there's a lot of money that's on the line, a lot of people that have paid for this event. It's a big multi-day event, and, uh, and so they're moving to a hybrid model, and there's a lot of people that paid for tickets, obviously, that get access to This is not a SharePoint Saturday free event. Anybody can go into it. So they're a hybrid model. These are paid attendees but that uh, their companies are not allowing them to trouble, travel or they're, they're concerned about traveling, so they're not going. And so Mark and team, and I'm getting involved to, to help out, uh, we're putting on this hybrid event now. And so it's kind of the same question of how do you have people that are 100% virtual and have some kind of interaction with the uh, in-person? And one of the things that we're doing, so obviously we've, so we've talked about, and we've actually have every Monday, we're going to have planning calls. So I got one later today. Um, we're, we've talked specifically about this, about having, you know, you have these online events that have these community areas. So you have the tracks, the multiple tracks that are going on. 
which is on everybody understands, but to then have this, this community space that's open that anybody can jump into. One of the things that we're talking about doing is for the live sessions for those rooms. So we're going to have a live, uh, live meeting or not the live meetings. Those would be keynotes. We're going to be using regular teams meetings for all of the sessions across five or six tracks. And we're going to have the same. So one room will have a track that runs the whole day. And so people will come in and join those conversations. So what we're going to what we're talking about doing is asking people rather than raising their hand to ask a question to ask it through teams. There will be some people that won't have a laptop and they can ask their question. We'll try to capture those those things. But that's one way that we can have the interaction between the virtual and the in person. And so that would be kind of my my first response or suggestion is for the people that are live there in the room, you have to be a bit more sensitive to the fact that there could be a slight delay or the people that are online may miss part of the, the crosstalk um, yeah. that, that happens. Have to and pay so attention to a screen. <laughs> right. And and so you, you have to make a, an effort to like one in-person question, one online question and uh it, you know kind of encourage that interaction it's kind of a community management activity that has to happen for that yeah. to work. i'm glad he's going to do that i mean i'll probably go down because i'm not going to fly i drive um and i know we've talked about this before the density of people there is such that i'm really not too worried about it even um, if they had 500 people there i wouldn't be worried that's a massive space. <laughs> that's like <laughs> you could easily space them out six feet apart in that convention center and right. never hit wall to wall but um yeah that'll be cool yeah. it'll be very interesting uh to give a session and then you know be watching the screen at the same time you're watching the audience and seeing mm -hmm. what ways i can integrate them yeah, yeah. i know i'm planning on going up with don kirkham and eric shups and i we're, we were talking just this weekend about road tripping up to branson Oh, nice. So I think I'll be, be my first time there. So oh. I know Mark, Mark asks me every year and I always say, yeah, let's do it. And then oh, I can't do it. <laughs> yep. So it's a so, nice you know, place. Neil. I, I think we'll be up there this time for sure. Uh, I, I am also thinking about road tripping it. It's only uh, 19 hours. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, I, You're a professional. It's about, it's about eight hours. <laughs> I, so I like I like road trips. Um, and I've not done that stretch. I've been all the way to Texas and back. Of course, I when I lived in Seattle, drove all the way to Portland, Maine, down to New York and D.C., all the way back out around the Great Lakes and, and uh, Minneapolis and Chicago and, and, and back out. But it's uh, I've not done you know just the, the southern U.S., and I'm interested in doing that. However... I don't want to do it alone, so I'm trying to talk one of my kids into skipping school and work. And coming <laughs> There's a tough one. Somebody in the community there who's yeah. interested in going that you would tolerate a road trip with? Um, possibly. Yeah. yeah. One, two people leave, one comes back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that. That's so a lot of I, mileage my, to dump a body. I know. Um, I know. I'm just saying, you know. What are what are the new dates for the collab summit? Uh, so that I'm, I'm, is, I'm actually talking to actually bizarre, I'm talking to Mark yeah. right now on Facebook so, Messenger. Yeah, like, September 28th. Yeah, September 28th through 30th. So Mondays are the workshops. I don't know how many workshops. Usually there's like, you know, six to twelve, something like that. I'm not sure how many are are going on, but the workshops will also again uh, be going on. And and uh, I, I'll just repeat, these are not free, open to everyone. These are <laughs> for paid. So if you're you're interested in participating, you can buy a ticket and participate in this content in this event. You get the, the, the workshops is a little more expensive, but they're being kind of retooled for some of the audience being online and some there in person. And then two days of sessions. And, and I, as I said, five or six tracks that are going on and, and uh, as paid attendees, you'll have access to all of the, you know, any recorded content. Um, but, uh, access to to jump around in between all of those sessions and get access to this to the community. So, you know, what I think we'll start fleshing that out and start talking about it over the next uh, week or two. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that that announcement was actually live. And there's a blinky, flashy ad on Rackley's Facebook page, so it's <laughs> it's live. It's out there. 
He's a Yankee blinky, Black flashy Yankee. guy. He is. Well, I, th- I think, I think, you know, I usually get Neil. If you haven't haven't seen this, I usually get grilled for going backwards and addressing questions that were asked five minutes ago when we're no longer on that subject. But in this case, <laughs> <clears throat> because there was so much confusion. So because time, there was so much, in the now, Eric. so much, there was so much confusion around, you know, where you just jumped right into from the question to, can I say this to the conference? And then there was all this discussion about mm-hmm. road trips and such. I'm going back because this is actually a very important um, comment to be made, which is uh, on the teacher side of things, is something <laughs> wrong with your fingers? Yeah. Like, get, are you, are you okay? It, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Wind the, wind the bobbin up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, but I, I thought you were having some sort of pain that you wanted to discuss, you know, at your age with the, with the uh, you know, the arthritis and such. Anyway, um, the point was, we, as, as speakers in, in the community, all know how to handle an audience. And teachers know how to handle an audience when they're in front of them. But they don't necessarily know how to do the same thing when they've got 10 on a screen and 10 in front of them. And one of the best recommendations that can be made is just sort of over-communicate. So tell them we're going to have three questions in the classroom. Then we're going to have three questions from these kids online. Whatever you know needs to happen over the next 10, 15, 20 minutes, just set the parameters up. Obviously, the ages are going to be dependent um, on on their ability to you know follow the bouncing ball and go back and forth. But the, the more communication happens and the more people understand what's where you're going to go with your questions and your your lesson planning, uh, the better off the experience is going to be for everybody. If you're, if you're sort of all over the place and you don't know if you're going to ask somebody in the classroom or online or whatever, people are going to lose interest and, and yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be a mess. I, mm-hmm. I like that. I also like the, especially we're talking about education structuring, remember not to say, okay, for the next hour, we're going to be talking about when, especially with children, you know, that obviously that does not work. It has to be broken up into um, chunks of, here we're trying to disseminate information. You know, here we're going to have an activity. Here's just kind of a fun, open time. Then we go back, and here's the instruction, activity, free time. And uh, you know, so I know that there are events. Think about Ignite coming up, uh, Inspire that we just had, where they're reducing things to, you know, 15 to 30 minute segments of content. So it's more of a TED Talk type uh, approach. Um, yeah. That is just a question of, again, how are you filling that time? How are you structuring that? Yeah, I think there's other tools as well. I know, um, you know, if you look at Teams, for example, if you're asking questions in a class, there's a teacher asking questions, who's going to answer, who's going to respond? You know, there's the little, there's the poly add in that lets you do the thing. There's the hands up thing. I don't know, and I'm going to mention a third party product here, but I don't know if any of you use Kahoot, if you've seen that as an application. It's available on your phone. It's available on your laptop. We use that for family quizzes, like just answering questions, Q and A, all that kind of thing. I think it's it, having that Damn. additional level of. Tell us about these family quizzes, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> and and if somebody does poorly on those quizzes, what's what happens? Well, Out if you win, family. if you win, they you clearly they get voted the off the island. Week. They get held back <laughs> a year. Definitely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it's Sorry, cool. I mean. It, you can, you can, it means that you're not, so we, we started doing family quizzes when all this lockdown happened. And obviously most of my, almost all of my family is obviously based over in the UK. Um, some in Australia, um, various places around the world. So what we did was we, we simply just created this thing and it's like, okay, someone's going to host a quiz. So someone would ask a question and you would hold up to the, to your camera, like an A, B, C or D as your answer. Right. And, and it, it just, it was clunky and it was messy and it was, it That's meant that the cool. cameras were constantly interacting, but if you use the if you use another application like look i mean i'm saying Kahoot, there's probably a plethora of these similar applications but yeah. i like that one um it gives you an option to say you ask the question so you've got direct video you know i'm asking the question and you go to it and you just click it on your phone click a b c d and then it's it tops all the scores up and it's all you give you that report at the end so is there a forfeit for coming last no, you just you just deem the stupidest person in the in the family for that week. <laughs> is there a forfeit for coming first? Yes, there is. You have to host the quiz the next time. So mm-hmm. it's just it's it's fun though. It really is. I, I think that's a great idea. I was just I it's wrote awesome. down. So we do a family um, uh, Zoom every Sunday, mm-hmm. and uh, so I just had to do the the talk portion of it um, last night, and uh, it, it's Your great. Poor so we family. Have, 
Yeah, so we've got family across four states, and um, uh, you know, it, it, it kind of so it's with my, you know, my kids primarily, and my wife and I, and my and my in laws, and a couple sister in laws that that join in. But it's, uh, it's that's a fun idea is to do a quiz. I was just I wrote down that uh, put together a family quiz about grandma and grandpa history. So my in laws, and then and then <laughs> have everybody respond to it. And then go through each question, have them answer, and then show the results of how people answered would be pretty funny. Could be pretty yeah, funny. Yeah, Depends definitely. on the questions. How embarrassing yeah, that construction is. Yeah. Survey says. All right. <laughs> so I've got, um, and not to confuse everybody, this is a, a, a somebody named Neil, not this Neil. <laughs> it's a different as far Neil. as far as you know. I just want someone, someone that knows what they're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> as opposed to me. <laughs> Um, says, Hey guys, uh, this is, this is kind of a softball question for the team here, but Hey guys, I've just recorded an interview with someone on teams. Is there a way to share the video publicly? Because when I send the link, it asks the other user to log into office 365. You can download it from stream and upload it to somewhere that's public. Dropbox. Well, most people, like, <laughs> sure. most people I know, <laughs> like, would, most people I know would YouTube it. Yeah. 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 That's. Uh, I know it's been tool. a big request. We've talked about in the past, uh, you know, that just a reminder that, you know, Teams and or Streams specifically is not supposed to be a replacement for YouTube. YouTube has its purposes. Microsoft focuses on the enterprise and Stream it, pr is the, the primary use cases are enterprise use cases. So you want to have that stronger, uh, you want to have the analytics around it. You want to have the stronger permissions and management capability of that um so yeah as neil said as neil says to neil, <laughs> neil, to neil. neil. download it <laughs> upload it to a public platform stick it on a OneDrive. stick it on youtube or YouTube. vimeo yeah. 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 favorite favorite choice of video streaming platform facebook even whatever yeah Netflix. yep good point there all right um levente uh, asked question, dear members, I'm looking for a PowerShell solution to download all the recipients from Office 365 who we have sent emails in the past year. My boss wants to save all email addresses who the company contacted previously and keep it as an official offline backup. Is there any solution to list all the sent email recipients into a CSV? First answer, yes. Yes. Second answer is where are they stored? Third, what? third, what? third, well, third not answer, but third comment is that's a GDPR nightmare right there. Yep. We'll, we'll right. assume our friend is navigating the legal waters as they deem necessary and appropriate. But just to answer the question, it's going to depend on where those addresses are stored. Are they in an, uh, is it a group? Is it a um, um, dis distribution list? I mean, where are they? So that's the first question. And then it just becomes writing the PowerShell to interact and get those down and export as a as CSV. Uh -huh. So yeah, I, I, I make an assumption that there are, that, that it's a, either a DL in exchange or it's just a simple list of people we send email to. If it's yeah. a list of people we sent email to, what was the subject? How do we identify those individual emails? Could is be a sure point. Of course, there is. It could be anything. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's no. I mean, you, going in as an admin into Exchange Online uh, and and having access to. Um, I mean, do, do you don't have access to everything that everybody sent out via Exchange, right. unless they're a defined contact. For right. The business level, you're not going to have access. So otherwise, you'd have to. Is, are you talking about? Does this have to be done on a user by user basis, or, or I mean, obviously, you could go in as you said, anything that's public. If there's a DL, or if there's uh, just a you know a, a group that admins a member of that would have access to all of that. Otherwise, it would have to be individual driven to be able yeah. to get, capture it, who's talked to whom. It, so it email. sounds to me like it's a marketing thing, perhaps a marketing yeah. reason, and therefore yeah. there may be two or three people and two or three individuals in the organization that have sent all these emails out, which would so, make it a little easier, but they may have to run the PowerShell script under their own <clears throat> context 
to access yeah. their own emails. So Christian, this would probably be a good time to mention the distribution list for us. If there's follow-up information that somebody can provide, uh, yeah. we can specifically address that. Yeah, you can email us at officehours at collabtalk.com and, uh, and we can respond. I should go in and comment on, on, on this person's post to ask the question because I think there's two ways of looking at that. There's one that's looking at all of the emails that have gone out officially from the company I think Neil, that's kind of what you were referring to. Yeah. And 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 I read it based on the language here. And again, I may be misinterpreting the question, but is like, let's say we have a hundred employees. Marketing has been sending out emails, but are you also trying to collect anything like every individual of those hundred individuals who they've contacted? There is no way to go and capture that automatically from that one place. You're talking from the admin standpoint, yes, you can go and capture that. I've done that when I've switched mm -hmm. CRM platforms and I have to you know, download from one location. I just update and scrub my list in the new CRM application or the marketing automation application. Um, but I can't then go to each of my employees and say, provide me with a list of everybody that you've emailed from your account here. We're like, Yeah. I write these sort of scripts all the time, um, so it's it's really there's a generic solution to it. It depends on the user's context and what they've got access to. But mm -hmm. if the list is stored out there um, in a single place or even across multiple places that somebody has access to, it's easy enough to iterate through those, enumerate them, and get the information for export. Yeah, and even think of it from an e-discovery perspective. You could use e-discovery in Office 365 to find out all those emails that have a particular context, subject line, whatever it might be. So you can pull that, download it. You might have to then upload it into Excel and, and filter on it, but easy. That's an not, excellent not, point. Not difficult yeah. at all. I wouldn't have thought of that. That's a good idea. Hey, by the way, got some comments here from our good friend for the, uh, David Wilhelm with SharePoint Fest. Hey, David, how's it going? When's the next SharePoint Fest? Um, it's, it's usually in it's usually September. August. Just December. Yeah, got uh, Seattle is October 5th through 9th. And then it's Austin in December? Is that correct? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Right. So Austin, when is it in December? The week before Christmas. Oh, cool. I'm going to be there. That's like a five hour drive from home. That's easy. Yeah. Less than that, even. So, so David has three comments. Um, number one, does Riz? Oh, no, I'm know, nervous. Yeah. Does Riz know how <laughs> handsome he is? Um, <laughs> Hi, stop buddy. it, David. Nice stop it. <laughs> yes, he bigger. tells us. David, he tells us all the time. So we're yes, we are aware. <laughs> um, two, could Riz have larger headphones? Eric, I think you could get larger <laughs> headphones. I absolutely can, for yeah, sure. There are some right. hands though. <laughs> For sure. Oh, I, yeah. I think he could. Not should he. Could he? The answer That's is yes. funny because I can tell you. I can tell you firsthand. He has the same ones. <laughs> <laughs> and then the third one. Oh, oh, he just talks about. It. He says that yeah. So that fest is also doing um, virtual workshops. Uh, so with uh, with AC. So Andrew Connell's doing his. Yeah, I don't know if sorry, Andrew's going to yeah. be there or not. Um, but it sounds like, uh, and I'm sure as as the the year progresses that we might see uh, something um, similar in a hybrid model for SharePoint Fest as well. Great event. People definitely need to uh, to look. I guess I guess they had enough of uh, Chicago winters this year. They decided to move somewhere slightly warmer because usually December that. in Chicago. Yeah. Looking forward to seeing you in October, David. Hmm. Yeah, I will say Austin in December isn't that warm. Might be Texas, but it's not that warm. Uh, that's all relative, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ohio. So, Sean, you don't know this, but Ohio is one of four U.S. states I've never been to. Oh, we got to fix that, man. It's come finish. We got to get you out here. Ohio, both Carolinas and Hawaii. Everywhere Whenever else I've you, been. Anytime you come out, <laughs> wow. you've you got a place to stay here, Neil. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. <laughs> How many of the uh, Canadian states have you been to? We call them provinces, but, you know, they're the same. Uh, east. I went. Be, I crossed into Canada from Niagara. So there, yep. whatever that Can, Canada is the Canadian. first state. Yes. <laughs> I did also 
I also have done Alberta and British Columbia. So I did. Okay. I, I I drove the um, Icefields Parkway from from Calgary to Banff and Jasper, Lake Louise, Kamloops, and into Vancouver, and then and then then cruised up to Alaska, which is why I have Alaska. Ice. Field. I had 28 days towing Canada and Alaska. It was fabulous. Wow. Ice. Amazing. That sounds. I've been in uh, Quebec and uh, Ontario and uh, British Columbia. And also, uh, I've been in a state of confusion. So, <laughs> persistent, <laughs> persistent state. That, of that goes without saying. I, uh, so, all right. Uh, let's see. Next question. Uh, Michael Anderson, Mr. Anderson. Um, I was a little confused by this. I'm again. I'm gonna I'm gonna read these verbatim, and then we can comment on the questions being asked and be. Uh, that state of confusion that I'm in. Uh, my company uses Dynamic 365 Outlook for our official email. Uh, having constructed contact groups but cannot copy the addresses to use in other Microsoft 365 applications for non-email based distributions. Is there a way to copy these files out of Dynamics Outlook? No, I, Pablo Dynamics. I think we need. I think we need more context. I don't know. <laughs> no, Pablo Dynamics. Uh, well, clearly, boy, we got are the here. brain trust on this one, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All of us sitting here, like. Mm. Uh, my my first thought is like I didn't realize that there was a if there is if there was a a different flavor of Outlook specifically for Dynamics. Yeah, that's. To the best of my knowledge, that's a plug-in or some other adaptation of Outlook to work with Dynamics. Yeah, so maybe Michael, if you if you catch this, is give us a little more description. As like I wasn't sure about there's something that anything different about that. Um, Let's so, ask the question right now. Well, Are any yeah. of us well versed in Dynamics? Not really. There is a there is a mm -hmm. Dynamics 365 plugin for Outlook though. Right, but that so that's just that, shuttle CRM yes. contact back and forth. Yeah, but, right. but that data would be in the CRM side, and it would then be in within Outlook and within Exchange um, for you know so for Exchange Online or um, so it wouldn't be unique accessing that data to Dynamics for any reason. Yeah, um, yeah. So, oh, nice. I, yeah. yeah. If he's just trying to pull like a distribution list of members of a specific group that gets sent, like you know, let's say we're sending dynamics type data, whether it's sales data, whatever it might be, or groups of you know contacts through an Outlook plugin. I, I'd be, I mean, can I answer the question? No, I'm just let's be honest, right? I can't answer the question, but I would be surprised if there wasn't a way to pull the data from dynamics either through an API call, maybe a PowerShell option. Right. But you I download don't, it. I, I don't it's really there. Answer. Yeah. So I mean, it's been years since I was a Dynamics CRM user, but uh, you know, again, it's you can generate that list and export it to any other platform, so that's available. If you're talking about the Dynamics, the CRM aspect of that, and you can then take that and merge that into Outlook. Um, so depending, you know, Michael, on how you're trying to accomplish that, you know, through the plugin, through the tools, it may not there. They're just like you would with any other external application. If you're moving from, as the organization I did, moving from Dynamics CRM over to Salesforce, you export the, the lists from that system and you import them into that other system. And it would, it, it, you know, again, there might be some other better way of doing that, but those same steps would apply and work with pulling it out of Dynamics and then uploading those into Outlook. Logically. So. so basically, we have no answer for you, but we can all kind of guess on how it might work. I think the answers we've given are correct, unless there's more information, but uh, you know, ba based on we're, what- We're correct, it. unless we're not correct. <laughs> Incomplete basically, and correct. Agreed. That's right. <laughs> so the answer is E, all of the above. Yeah. So I don't know, Christian, can people see what we post in the chat window here? Uh, if I open the chat, yeah. So this is 
Um, there's a question. There's a comment. I've just been looking I see on the, the comment line. of where Eric said, "When did we lose control of this thing?" <laughs> yeah. Last comment made there. The assumption <laughs> is we had control, Riz. Uh, so, so I'm just going to post this in the chat window. It's a link to synchronization of data. It's yeah, basically it's across Dynamics and Microsoft Outlook. And leave your it, it might, it, off this time, Neil. Yeah, I, I will. Uh, it's not pictures. really showing up on the screen. My screen's too wide, but I'm going to paste it over in the in the okay. uh, live streams. Yeah, it might be a good start point. I just think um, it's about synchronization. Maybe it's an option, but at least it gives a link to a whole bunch of stuff online about various different things. Very good. Right. Ever something yeah. helpful, Liam? It is posted. I try. <laughs> All right, let me just make sure we're not missing any other questions. Um, any, nothing else snarky from David Wilhelm. Oh, he's nothing texting else now. snarky. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, he's all over this. He's, he's uh, graduated to direct texting me now. No, he, and he also clarified SharePoint Festa, they're doing uh, virtual training workshops only um, separate from the physical event. So they're doing kind of two things. So um, he didn't share a link. Um, to this stuff, which we would reshare. So, David, if you're still watching and want to provide something actual, useful link so that we could share it. So, David, is it safe for me to buy my ticket in October now? Will that actually? I assume so. I mean, I'm in contact can, with Jamie. If I can paraphrase, uh, you could if you hadn't frozen, Riz. Yeah. Oh, that was. Oh, uh, that's disappointing. There we go. Try it again. Okay. I'm not marketing. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. That, that would be um, to know him is to know him is to love him. You have to know him to appreciate it. But he's a great guy. <laughs> yep. Right on. Yes. I, 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 it, it's David's one of those people that we can add to the list of people who uh, are good natured about being poked fun at for stuff. So. Um, all right, uh, here's a question from Ertha saying, how to know if my team members have seen the notification I sent? So this is the Microsoft Teams question. How do I know? No. Number one answer, <laughs> ask them. <laughs> By far the most direct route, yes. Yes. But yeah, yeah. I, you know, it's not like an email where you can send uh, a confirmation, which most people ignore anyway. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you, you just don't know. Yeah. Well, we've I talked mean, about this previously, that there is a difference between the threaded discussions within channel discussions and within the chats. So you can see a read receipt uh, on the chats, but not within the threaded discussions. Right. It's UDP, not TCP. Or the So cu culturally, that's also what the reactions are all about. So people have been using yep. the thumbs up to indicate, yes, I've read this. And I said culturally, not experience. Just for you, Sean. But you just said experience. So you failed. Something's burning in my brain right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm now getting pinged like massively people saying, so you're coming to Branson? So you're coming to Branson? So you're coming to <laughs> <laughs> There's only two people watching this, Neil. Like, no, nope. man. I don't know. You don't expect this to believe well, someone telling somebody. Two people and they <laughs> told two people, and they told two people. You're so a popular guy, Neil. That's like me, Eric, uh, Jenna, Amy, Miguel Wood. Yeah, we're all coming. Neil, <laughs> Neil is the Vidal Sassoon of the Microsoft team SharePoint Exchange <laughs> World Azure now. So. so Miguel's making the trip too. Well, he said he doesn't have his boys that weekend, so he's free for oh, that week. So he's that, that was those oh, dates. Oh boy! So he's free. Branson will not be the same. <laughs> and just for the record, Miguel, there are no, are no horses in Branson that you can drop trow in front of, <laughs> much like <laughs> did in New Orleans. We really, uh, uh, we, yeah. we really lost our family rating today, guys. Yes, yes, yeah. we did. There's we'll turn, we'll, of... we'll we'll all turn up dressed like Kiss. It'll, it'll, yeah, I was, I was gonna, to that point, I was gonna say there's gonna be a lot of this. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the whole week. Yeah. That'll that'll be a photo op, man. I want to see that. <laughs> I'll bring my. There is a there is a picture of me and Miguel like wearing the whole kiss face makeup. 
Yeah, right? I think I've in, seen Lo that. in London, right? In the yeah. London the old Steve Smith's Evo conference. Yep. Yeah, definitely those those are all on Facebook. They're out there somewhere. I, yeah, <laughs> I do believe I've seen that one. All right, I've got a uh, a team's question here from Sean. He says, when users add files to chat, this is a longer description here. So um, give us your best, like meaningful, thoughtful looks. Yes, great. Uh, when users add files to channels and teams, they are dumped into folders with no metadata, not exactly a knowledge management, you know, uh, uh, records management best practice. It really is for collaboration in the moment rather than storage. He's soapboxing here, folks, but there's a question underneath this. Uh, what do people do with these documents once they are done? We need them for records. Do you ask users to move them to libraries in the group, cre group created and add metadata, including labels, and archive the team so they are still accessible? If so, do you have to clean up days or something? Do you just leave them in that documents folder and just let them pile up with no metadata? Do you ask users to put metadata on them, including labels? I think we get the point here. Yeah. Um, so it's a, it's a difference between uh, the the out of the box structure of of content of the SharePoint content in Teams um, versus uh, you know we, we have a formal records management structure infrastructure in place. So what are your recommendations there? Convenience and ease of use versus uh, completeness for records. Yeah. Um, my thought is. Yeah, you would have to move them over and add the metadata if that's what you want to do, or just do it that way the first time. I mean, there are links out of your um, files in uh, Teams to go to the SharePoint site. So they could be uploaded rather easily that way by just following that link. But yeah, you're going to have to go through SharePoint and um, do it that way rather than just dumping into a Teams channel or file store. Yeah, there. I think two things, a question that I've heard uh, often is, can I reprogram the out of the box, the, the, like a, the template for a new, for a new team creation to point to a specific SharePoint site? So if I've got that infrastructure over on SharePoint for the management of that, can I make it by default when I go into file, which is all SharePoint, move it there? And the answer is no, you cannot. But one of the things that you can do uh, is so yes, you're going to have to do some post-production work once something's closed. Move those across, assign that, and whether the admin is assigning metadata, which is what a crappy job that would be, uh, or end users do it. You know, well, what a crappy job that would be, and whether they do it in a timely manner and responsibly, and all those kinds of questions. One other thing that you can do is build your template as part of your provisioning process so that your team uh, has uh, a tab for that other SharePoint site where it is being managed properly and then train your users on ad hoc stuff, but anything that's project centric or needs to be done in the moment, move it to the right location. So it's in your files, it's as a tab, it's within that structure there. And it's also, there's a tab for that dedicated SharePoint site of that right place for that content. So you can kind of orchestrate um, how that and train your users on the proper usage of that that content. But even that, there will be some uh, you know post-mortem work to go post-production work to clean that up and make sure that all the content got to the right place. So another thought around that, which might be a nice compromise, is build a flow so that when people upload the document, um, it sends an email as a sort of reminder to the uploader to complete the, or maybe even start a workflow to complete the metadata. That's another option, relatively yeah. low stress, and it does push that reminder. Yep. Yeah, and it, it, it even with all that, there needs to be a certain degree of community management so that you're constantly redirecting people when you see correcting behavior. Hey, this shouldn't be here. You should have gone through the upload process. Because, Sean, to your original point, I mean, it, it's intentionally flat the way that Teams is built to get the, the most people feeling, you know, easy comfortable use. about, yeah, ease of use, just do. I'm comfortable, have conversations here start collaborations, but anything that starts to get, hey, this is project related, this needs to be tracked through the structure, 
Um, it's a training issue and it's a community management issue to make sure people are doing it correctly. So that is a part of your governance plan, right? Yep. You use the word. There's a plug for you, Riz. <laughs> yeah. Speaking, speaking your language. Yeah, I think and from that, uh, from that, from that, from that perspective, goes. you can also think about what you were talking about, Christian, in terms of, you know, there's, you can have a link of Teams, obviously has its own channels behind the scenes, has its own SharePoint site. You can link to another site if you want to make that official. You can then also have, you know, if people want to upload content to the official site, Flow would be a great idea. I love the idea of moving content through Flow. But also when you think about, okay, click the link to the SharePoint site, and I have a list, a library, we're going to call it. I can have mandatory metadata there, right? So right. I will even let you upload something unless you complete these fields. Those those are all options in SharePoint as well. So that kind of thing can can, can it, it sometimes it can be a, a it can be a hindrance to productivity, <laughs> but it's sometimes it's also you know if you need a specific field filled in, then it, it, you know the options are there for sure. Well, hey, here's a question. How's that mandatory me metadata upload interact with teams, though? I don't know. I, um, I really, really do This has been know. a problem in the past, you know, because you can require metadata um, as mandatory and people can still upload the yeah. file. I don't yeah. know what it does these days. So what I'd love to see, and I'm, I'm actually going to go and do this later today, just because you've now just tweaked my interest, is create a team, create a, create a new team and a channel, and go into the back end SharePoint side and modify the list to demand mandatory metadata on upload and yeah. see what it see what the team's interface does with that. It'll be interesting. I do Get, not know. You're going to be on I'll, tonight, Neil? Uh, <laughs> probably. <laughs> well, you know, you if you are, that? it'd be it'd be very interesting to hear your results. Okay. I'll, I'll 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 give it a try. I have a fairly free day today, so I'll give it a go. Don't say that too loudly or you know people are going to come knocking <laughs> on your door. By the way, I'm, sure, I'm just not on the call, so I'm okay. I, awesome. By the way, I shared I shared a link. Uh, David uh, Wilhelm had shared for the uh, the, sh the SharePoint Fest virtual uh, workshops, um, so you can see that in the live feed pages, and I've posted it there. Um, David also clarified. He says of why he wasn't responding very quickly. He says I'm in the hospital getting released with brand new baby David, uh, and then oh, share. Oh, cool. So then my next response Dave. is. Why the crap are you <laughs> responding? You're in the hospital. Like, I'm telling your wife what you just did. You've been responding to a live stream of work related stuff rather totally than. Busted, David. Wow, no, oh, busted. Wow. Well, David. Wow. Wow. Yeah, not not the same, not not quite the same experience. But I've, I have to go and I have to go and visit my surgeon this afternoon. I need double ACL, PCL, and MCL surgery. Oh, jeez. My wow. knees. You're going to help, years. Bill. 26 years of martial arts and soccer have not been well on my body, and I'm now a mess. I'm broken completely. I'm surprised I don't even need a wheelchair at this point. <laughs> Dangly legs. Yes. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's and a lot. I, oh. I yep. fell bowling a couple of about six, seven months ago, and uh, so I had to have complete surgery on my right knee. So I don't envy you what you have to do there, son. I'm not looking forward to it, Hal. Believe me. <laughs> So, David, get used to not having your ass cheeks because your wife's going to have them for quite some time now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd like to. Oh, there was a, there was a, in my, fresh, my freshman year at at, uh, at university. There was a uh, kid who I who I knew um, that I don't know what happened to him at the, the freshman year, but he was some kind of mixed martial arts champion out of Virginia and Northern Virginia. I just remember meeting him. He was I, I met him in the dorms and he's sitting there. He had a, a board like on his hand that had rope tightly wound around and he was just sitting there punching it and grinding his fist like that. And his fist was just like so wide, just like and just solid. And he demonstrated that the dorms that we were in were cinder block walls and he just punches the wall. And I'm just like, what the crap? He's like, yeah. It's like I really, I don't have any feeling on the front of the, the fist anymore. That's, that's all I did. Scar but... tissue. <laughs> yeah, that's, right. called, that's, called, that's called Makawara training. That's, just, that's intense. It's insane. And and uh, and we did have the conversation about like, like what's going to happen later in life? Says, yeah, I'm already getting. A, I have a lot of stiffness. I have some problems now. It's like you're 21 years old, 
and you're having these problems. Like, come on. (laughs) You've got the knuckles of an 80 year old. Yeah. yeah, Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, good times. All right, let's see. We've got three more minutes. We got time for one more question. Let me see here. Um, uh, uh, oh, uh, Paul says uh, says I've been receiving a fair few emails today regarding Teams. Users are unable to connect to a Teams meeting from the meeting pop up. No error message. Just sits and then nothing. Joining via the calendar and Outlook seems to work though. I was wondering if anyone else has experienced this. It's only been happening since yesterday. Uh, Any advice? Check your admin console. And he says, and there are no issues showing in Teams or 365 that I can see. Hmm. Okay, well. uh, That's one of those things where, you know, being a service and what not having visibility into some of what may be happening um, with your tenant is if you're experiencing this over multiple days, because it could be that there's a, I don't, I don't know, there's something that's been updated or being updated. Probably it could linkage, be the yeah. thing. Uh, and if it's still happening 24 and 48 hours later, contact Get that ticket in. support. Yes. Yes. Yep. Submit that ticket through your admin console and the tenant. Always love Get it. Some People, eyes on that. How quick they are to, to complain through the, uh, the social channels. And then you say, did you open a ticket? Have you let Microsoft know? Have you provided this feedback? Well, I don't think it's that bad. Right. Yeah. Is yeah. the machine plugged in? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think and, we're and past that point. But, and, yeah. and it's interesting from my perspective. So obviously I work for Microsoft. So I'm, I'm like in ring zero, right? So all of the, we, we, we operate four rings before things get to production. Right, ring zero is is all the internal Microsoft people. We get the new features, the new changes, the new updates, whatever first, and then we roll out. And and under current circumstances, given COVID, and we've tried to roll out new features faster, like the you know together feature, getting nine nine videos on screen versus just four. All those kind of things have all been happening quicker, 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 quicker all the time. So we see it. And we and I, I we try and trap it. And we try and if we, something goes wrong, I mean, um, the, the reason we have a ring feature is by the time it gets ring four, which is production, we hopefully have cleaned up all the mess. Because let's face it, mess happens, right? We're software you're developing software in the day, and when you're yeah. developing it faster than ever before, there's going to be issues. You just can't help it. But I agree with you completely. If if after 24 hours, 48 hours, that problem hasn't gone away, there's something else to yeah, think about. Surprising. But open and tickets. Then it's, then it's you, you should, not me. It's, right. You absolutely should open it. If you see an issue, open a ticket. Right. And we might say, okay, we've got 500 of these tickets that are all complaining about the same thing. We already know that's one single cause for all 500 tickets. We're going to fix that and we'll roll out the new update in the next 24 hours. Done. Sometimes even faster than that. But without tickets, we don't know there's a problem. Right. That, and, you don't, and you don't know how to prioritize it either. Right. Absolutely. So. Yeah. If you don't tell us, posting on Facebook that you hate teams because this <laughs> doesn't, we don't have a team of people crawling Facebook looking right. for problems. And sometimes you just want to complain to complain. I mean, everybody does it, but right. whether or not it deems, or whether it's worthy of uh, intentional oh, or more we, attention. We have, inside Microsoft, we have a whole Teams channel about people complaining about Teams. <laughs> we complain about it ourselves, but that's our feedback channel. Right? That's you know, how we does. I think they should uh, redirect. They should move that complaint discussion over into Slack. <laughs> <laughs> hey, gentlemen, we we are out of time. We're at the top. I got to jump to another meeting. But uh, thanks everybody for participating. And of course, hey, if you're watching this, so this is uh, we didn't say this at the beginning. So this is part one of episode twenty one. So this is our twenty first week in a row of doing these sessions. We'll be back again at six p.m. Pacific. 21 uh, heft of beer for us. For our APAC. So it's a little bit, uh, we still have some questions that are on the list that we have. Any other questions you can send to us if you'd like us to try and cover these at uh, office hours at collabtalk.com. And uh, otherwise, thanks, gents, for, for making it to the call. And I, I'm sure Hal and I will be back this evening. Yeah, Sean, I, Mike, I, is I, sleeping I, again. I, I just confirmed my calendar's clear and I'm going I to do that Metadata test. going to take a nap. I <laughs> sure. Uh-huh. Mm. Yeah. When when you're napping at 9 p.m., isn't it just called sleeping? <laughs> Depends Sean, on when you, you start. Sean, are you getting old?
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. No way. <laughs> oh, All right, man, guys. We'll talk, talk to you later. Fellows. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye okay. Have to a you. good one. Take care, y'all. See you tonight. Um, yeah, so I'm, uh, as, as I was mentioning this morning, you know, rotated the desk around, completely changed everything up here. It, uh, it's better for the, for the production activities. I've got my lights better set up for it. Um, got, got more space to play. And I actually have this little zone, this area over here I'm going to put, you know, I'll, I'll show you here. So I'm going to actually put up, I'm thinking about blocking out that wall with green screen permanently. It's, you know, it's a basement. I, I don't, I don't need, it's not like I rely on that light, but create this little standing area. And I'm going to create a stand for the TV to have it up higher for the other monitor and uh, be able to do little, you know, weather reports, whatever. <laughs> cool. Uh Good times, good times. Um, well, why don't we go ahead and, and officially get started? We're uh, we're at time, and mm -hmm. uh, for those joining in, this is the uh, uh, the second half of episode twenty one of the Microsoft Community Office Hours, and uh, uh, with me as always, Hal Hostetler. Hey, Hal. Hi. And uh, I'm Christian Buckley. We've got uh, uh, Sean McDonough. That's halfway here. I know he's. He might be napping again. Last week, you heard me. Last last week, we're just like, what happened to Sean? And he fell asleep and, and never woke up. So that was pretty funny. Um, but uh, oh, he just in the chat, oh, uh, he supports Ah, uh, I see it. Okay. They dorked up his internet, he says. I don't know what the technical term dorking up uh, an internet connection means. I don't know. I don't know that I want to. It doesn't sound positive, but no, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But so anyway, anybody that's uh, watching, we're going to have some other folks. Um, we've got Neil that'll probably join. I don't know if Riz will join. You know, he he always he always talks a good game, like he's going to join in the evening. But it's way he's he's got. I think his his little girls. Uh, you know, once they're they're out, I think his uh, his brain stops working at that point, and he just goes to sleep because they're they're up early. <laughs> uh, yeah, we should uh, we should box Sean some more. So, um, you know, we had a couple uh, so some questions that were left over that were asked out in the Office 365 community. So we've we're, we've pulled a lot of questions from the Office 365 community, which were also uh, uh, live streaming on, as well as the Microsoft Teams community in Facebook. Uh, but you can also email us questions at officehours at collabtalk.com, uh, as well as ask them right in the live stream. So if you have questions, we are monitoring the book of faces. And uh, Rolly Perot, hey, uh, is, is watching, but uh, you know, always good to see familiar faces uh, drop in, say hello. Uh, if we answer a question and we are wrong, please point us point that out to us. Though, hasn't happened so far. Oh, there's Neil. It's Neil. And that's Neil. Hey, Neil, we're just we're just getting started. How's it going? The rolling start. Sean is. Um, uh, <laughs> Sean's broken this evening, so his. His interwebs are, are down, so he's he's okay. kind of monitoring, I think, via his phone or something. Okay. Has Sean ever been fixed, though? I mean, you say he's broken. Is he? Uh, no, he, he needs to be fixed, but <laughs> I'm not brave enough to do it, so I'm more... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going there either. Yeah. <laughs> I think with the COVIDs, it's a good excuse just to leave it to, you know, someone else, his family, people that are there in town to do that. Uh, I was just saying that we we do have a, a few questions that were left over from this morning. There's a couple of new questions that are posted out, but if anybody has one, go ahead and write it in. Why don't we jump right in? Um, there, I just saw one. I tested it out here. Uh, hang on, I gotta shut this down. Move back over the questions. There we go. Um, Alyssa asked a question. Uh, she's a fairly new user of Teams. Uh, she says, "If I'd like to forward an email from Outlook." Uh, to the team, 
and I at mention a tag uh, in the body of the email with a tag work upon delivery into the you know, uh, to the email. And the answer is no, it will not. It'll show up just as text unlinked, unhyperlinked. It will not recognize that as a tag. I don't believe that there's a way, there's not a short code or some other way for it to be recognized. It's just, look, it's just a plain text that comes across from the email. Of course, what you can do, and this is the most common practice for that scenario, is then respond to it. You, you the email, send it over there. And I actually, when I, when I do that, when I want to tag somebody or tag, you know, add a tag in Teams, um, that's outside the body of that. I will then go in and uh, uh, and reply to it and like CC tag a person or tag the item. So it's still it, it'll show up as the reply to that other item. So it's still searchable, um, but no, it won't come across in the email. So that's one of those things where I, I remember somebody asking that question when the feature went live last year, last fall. Was it this year? I don't remember. Time's a blur. <laughs> so uh, yeah, when the when the tagging was added, I remember somebody asking that question. Uh, so I have no idea if it's uh, you know out in user voice. Go take a look in user voice, and I'm sure there's there's got to be some requests for additional features around tagging. And my recommendation is in a scenario like this, if it's a nice to have or if you like really need it for the way that your team works and you're heavily relying on the use of, of the tags within Teams, is to go into user voice, search and see if there's anything that's related and vote it up if there is. If there's not, then add something in. Of course, you know Microsoft will prioritize things which are uh, you know, things that stop business from moving forward, um, but they do consider uh, items that are nice to have features if enough people vote for it. So if you add it in, what I'd suggest doing is then share that user voice entry with everybody in your network and get them all to go in and vote for it. And that will force Microsoft's hand uh, to go in and respond to that. And if there's more than five or 10 votes on any item, Microsoft will respond. And they may tell you we have no plans of ever doing this, but that's a response. Uh, yeah. So is it? Do you know? Either of you know? Is it five or is is it ten? My memory's gone. It, you know? In the SharePoint, I know when when we were looking at SharePoint on prem scenarios, because <clears throat> I was one of the, I would always receive uh, information whenever someone posted in the SharePoint on prem. User voice. I would always be one of the people that received the email to say there's a new thing. We 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 were really looking for ten. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, or or a really smart idea. And right. You never well, know, well, that's right? the other thing. But it, but it, I think the point there is that if it's you know ten, whatever it is, maybe other product areas have a lower threshold for that. But mm. it's it, it you don't have to have a hundred responses or hundreds. It's it's ten. And that in the Microsoft will go and take a look at that item. And so that's why I recommend if it's something that you really want or need for your business or just that would be an excellent feature and it doesn't exist or even if it does exist and you, you only have a handful of votes, upvotes on an item, share it out with your network and you get 10 or more and Microsoft will go in and respond to that. Yeah, and I will say, Christian, I know having been the recipient of that, user voice in incoming things <laughs> we, we we don't just only see what is that it was a cat yeah, sure. <laughs> we don't just only see them when they hit 10 we see all of them right yeah but but, but we're but more I, likely to respond when something has a degree of weight behind it yeah and i and i was trying to remember which which team it may have been sharepoint um but it may have been in teams i'm trying to remember if Lori uh, potmeyer who uh is, is the uh, community engagement lead over Microsoft Teams. Uh, I can't remember you know, which product area where they talked about it, where they're actually measured on that. So they that they mm -hmm. that the, the team actually the product team, you know, uh, they they've set that as a goal or a rule for them that that anything with ten or more that they must respond to. Again, they, they what's great is if they come and they say something like it's already on the roadmap. It's a lower priority, but it's but it's something that we are planning to do. Or 
you know, they could come back and say, hey, that's a really good idea. Both of those scenarios happen a lot. You know, you get better insight right. into what's happening and and occasionally they come back and they say there's no plan to do that. Or I've also heard them say uh, that's not something that we'll do. Uh, let's see. Yeah. And Sean keeps chatting on there. I don't know. He's not here. So, um, <laughs> it's like partially here. I don't know if, if I should respond yeah. to that stuff, but yeah, it's coming off really, um, needy, kind of whiny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I did like the Sean, the five ten, whatever it takes. Yeah, that's good. Uh, all right, so another question. Um, uh, uh, Rostislav says, um, client tries to share recorded video session via stream, but my email is listed as invalid user. How can I view the team's recording if I was only a guest in another team's meeting? I don't think huh. you can. Yeah, so be a member of the team to view the stream yeah that's yeah, if, uh if you're if you're a guest from another azure id tenant then no you're, you're pretty screwed at that point yeah so that's we we kind of answered the first half of the day um that, you know about you know, somebody that's external wants to view that content what do you do it's like well then you go and you upload it to youtube or vimeo or put it on OneDrive or somewhere else now if you still want to have controls over who can see it you don't want it open to the world on your public YouTube page. You can always um, put it as a hidden file or, or password protected. Um, and so there's ways that you can do that. Or again, you can put it in a, a OneDrive and control exactly, uh, you know, who has access to that, that file. Yeah. Sean says, set some permissions on it. Thank you. Sean. <laughs> Do some pretty stuff. Show. Yes. So astute. <laughs> I'm mocking you, Sean. <laughs> uh, he says, my pleasure. Yeah, he knows. <laughs> All right, yes. Okay, um, Faith asks, is there any way to export out channel content um, so we don't have the channel to email capabilities yet? at the conclusion of a project for record keeping. Export out channel content. Well, a channel is technically a document library in the SharePoint site, so you could just download the whole folder. For the documents, yeah. Well, not a document library, it's a folder. I guess the, the downside is you then don't have the chat and all the rest of it that goes with it. Well, but you have that, so that is stored in on the Exchange side, and that's mm -hmm. still... Um, you know, uh, attach what what you would not have. Well, you'd have the threaded discussions. You'd have all of the uh, the documents and the chats rely on. There's two part. It's it's whoever participates within those chats. So that's mm -hmm. the part that you would potentially lose. Um, so uh, uh, what's one of the reasons why the recommendation is to uh, we've talked about this in the past. Um, archiving, and I'll do air quotes, archiving a team is not just removing, don't remove the content and those threaded conversations and save it off somewhere because um, you'll lose the, the, the context is searchable around all of the other, the, the conversations, the activities, the context around that content. Um, and so the better way of doing that is to uh, remove users from the team uh, and yeah, and then uh, unfavorite that from the view, but it still exists. So if project starts back up, um, all the content is still there, it's searchable, um, but no one can go in and add or, or, you know, or remove new content or participate in any of the threaded discussions. It kind of freezes it in time. <laughs> That's actually, uh, and Neil, has there been any conversation that you're aware of about a formal archiving, like a one-click archiving of teams? No, not that I'm aware of. Doesn't mean it's not happening, but it's certainly not something I'm aware of. Nope. Yeah, that's a, that's a, a question that's on my short list for mm -hmm. air, airlift when that happens. 
So an airlift for those don't are aware. So it is a, it's an MVP only um, kind of uh, product team engagement. So they did uh, one in Bellevue, so one near Microsoft campus and one in Amsterdam. Uh, they were fantastic last year. Uh, it was kind of a spinoff of the MVP summit where I think there was so much that was happening with teams. Um, the product team and a bunch of MVPs said, you know, we need to do something where it's just teams focused. Um, not all that other technology, SharePoint, Outlook, the uh, the Office Suite, Azure, all that nonsense. Mm -hmm. Just teams. Yeah, it, was, it was a great, great experience. Um, and it was just a deep dive into every aspect of the product. So looking forward to doing that again, all virtually, of course. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so that was a request I that I had made a number of people. I said, what that actually looks like. And so instantly you get the product team that responds and says, well, you know, archival, the way that you're describing it, it's, it's like you can archive the team's components, you can archive the uh, the chat components and the thread of conversations in an exchange. There are existing tools for those. Um, you can access kind of all those pieces through the compliance center. There's things that you can do, but it's really disjointed. And I said, I said, well, there should be an admin only control. That's a single button that says archive where it does that, where it automatically removes all users, backs up all the SharePoint, backs up all of the exchange components to it. Mm -hmm. Um, but then keeps the Office 365 group in kind of a hibernated mode if you want to refresh that and bring it all back. Oh, that was just the idea. Or a third party in ISV can do it as well. That'd be nice. Just be great to have it. Just saying. Um, all right, here's one. Um, Stony. A great name, Stony Heffern. Yeah. Anyway, like Stony Larue, the country singer. Oh, that was the TV show by uh, by that name when when I was growing up. Stony Burke. Um. Gracious me, uh, Jack Lord starred. He was a cowboy. You know that was long before the Hawaii Five O days. It just shows you how <laughs> old TV. I was a young Jack Lord then. It was a very young Jack Lord. I actually know who that is. Uh, so Stoney asks, if I have meetings with the same members, internal and external, is there a way to can those into a group? Can those, can them into a group so that I don't have to add them each meeting one at a time? Make a deal. Yeah. Yeah, create a DL. Yeah. Such as sending an email with questions to office hours at collabtalk.com is a DL. And so all of us will receive that email and can look at your questions and then email each other and be like, I have no idea what this person's asking for. <laughs> yeah, another way to ask questions is. Uh, to go to google.com. It was a joke. Yeah. Yeah, not a funny joke, I know. All right. Um, let's see. Christian. <laughs> what anything else going on, Neil? Oh, so I have something else going on. So remember oh. this morning in this morning's call, we talked yeah. about what happens if you upload a document to a Teams channel that has required metadata. Oh yeah, that's right. So I tried it and I tested it and it still allows you to upload the document. It still allows a member of that channel to see that document, but it has a very clear red flag saying manage metadata, metadata is missing. Hmm. So it, I, 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 it wasn't like a super thorough end to end test of all scenarios. It was a very simple, quick test. But fundamentally, if you know, I create, basically just create a channel. I went into the SharePoint site behind the scenes. I created a new column. I set that column as being required data. And I uploaded a document through the Teams interface. If I upload it through SharePoint. I get the little pop-up box Prompt. that says, yep. you need to add this. If yep. I do it through Teams, I don't get the pop-up. It still uploads the document. 
But then when someone goes to view that document, it says there is missing metadata. So it's in the view, whether you're looking at it via SharePoint or within Teams? Yes. Okay, so you see, get that you see both. Yeah. But there's no interface through just the Teams scenario. You just see the, the notification, but there's not right. a prompt? Nope, not at all. It lets you just upload the document, no, no prompt whatsoever. And I tried it as an admin and as a user, same experience. Um, it just uploads, but says there's missing metadata. Well, there's something that a manager or a project manager can harass by going and doing a query on show me a listing of all uh, documents with missing metadata, mm -hmm. who uploaded those, and then you can yep. go harass those. I see a theme that Hal never attaches, uh, assigns the metadata when he's uploading content, and maybe because it's via Teams, mm -hmm. so you're never prompted, and you don't know to do it. Yeah, with Teams, you, 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 that was it. You simply don't know. It just lets you just upload, done, and then you only see it when you, if you go to the view through Teams to then see the document, it will show you there and say there's metadata meta missing. If you view, view it through SharePoint or upload it through SharePoint, if you upload through SharePoint, you get the prompt, you know, the box pops up, says dialog box pops up and says, these are required fields and you have to do that. If you go and just view the document through SharePoint, the column, that you're expected to have required metadata on just says uh, metadata required or information required. I forget the exact phraseology. But. Okay. I mean, couldn't you, in theory, then go in and create a Power Automate that says whenever a document is, you know, via Teams, can you do that through which workload? Say if it's uploaded via Team to prompt and provide like a form for the metadata? I would imagine you could. I don't know for sure. I've never tried it, but it would seem like a logical extension of what we've just been talking about. Yeah. So. Be something to prove out. Maybe we should, uh, let's do this. Let's assign a task to Sean <laughs> go okay. in and prove that out. I think that's something good, a good task for Sean to do and to give back to all of us and report back. Mm -hmm. I'm good with that. Sean, and I, I'm, uh, I'm going to say I have to drop at the, at the bottom of the hour, by the way. So I've only got a few uh, more no. minutes. That's good. Anything else that we get assigned to Sean? Neil, while you're here. All of the things. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. I think that's good. Hey, I did my task last week, so I created the DL. I feel happy I did something. Yeah, that's, that's good. And, uh, oh, and uh, so I had a call with, uh, with Rackley, so, uh, and uh, he said he did, he connected with you as well, so. I, I will. I will most likely be flying in. I have to be honest. What convinced me was what he said. What we're going to be doing the day after the event, which is we're going to that top-ranked uh, roller coaster theme park that's right there. Oh, so that's right. why he's asking us to stay till Thursday. Correct. Okay, now I get it. Correct. Yeah. So we're in. Um, I think <laughs> I'm going to do. I'm going to. He want, he's, he's interested in a session on Azure Sentinel. Um, which is kind of in my wheelhouse now these days. And Amy, my, my much, much, much better half, um, she's, she operates in the Office 3, M365 um, Enterprise Mobility Suite, so Intune, Autopilot, all that kind of space. So we're going to kind of do a, hopefully going to do a kind of a combined double session covering both compliancy, security, all of that kind of thing end to end. That's our plan. We'll see how that works out. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping oh, yeah, just I, come I, hang out and drink. <laughs> I was thinking about you know, doing the drive out there, but uh, if I can't, if, if if neither of my boys go, and there's a there's a couple people that are local, I, I'm I haven't ruled it out. I just I'd like to do the road trip. I'd like to experience, um, you know that that trip, the kind of part of the southern swing, um, yeah. from Utah, go out through Colorado, down through Pueblo, and and uh, kind of the southern end and and then down all the way over to Branson, and then maybe come back south um, through eastern Texas and mm -hmm. Dallas, visit some friends, and then kind of cut up and over. I've seen New Mexico. Honestly, there's no reason to ever drive from uh, through most of western Texas and most of New Mexico. There's no reason western for te anyone Western Texas to. was where I got my first speeding ticket in the U.S. <laughs> Driving back from... Utah. 
funny oh. enough. Well, there so you go. where are you in Utah, are you in Utah Christian? I'm, I'm just south of Salt Lake. I'm in Lehigh. So that's the it's where the Microsoft oh. office is. And so Amy, oh. Amy's from Utah. Oh. She grew she grew up in Heba. Oh, so she's up there. And, uh, it's beautiful uh, up there. I'd love to live up there. Yeah. Her, her, her dad lives in West Valley now. Oh, that's that's unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been up there a couple of times to visit him. Just to, yeah. to hang out and just. I'm not a fan of uh, the Salt Lake Valley and West Valley, the western side of it. So there's some yeah. there's some you know nice parts, but um, yeah, I lived in Harriman uh, for two yeah. years, which is the bottom of the valley, and, and it's like due north, straight is is uh, West Valley City, and then you hit the airport kind of up there. But uh, yeah, I'm trying yeah, to think. Brother, brother lives in is it Jordan? Jordan, yeah, uh, South Jordan, West Jordan. Huh? It's gonna, I'm getting spoken at. <laughs> oh, it's going to be West Jordan or South Jordan. Yeah. I think it's West. Yeah. Yeah. So we've been up there a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's some nice parts up there, but I, I prefer Utah Valley. So down across, over the point of the mountain, I'm right at the top of the valley. Like literally where where we are, like I, I – you can – there's two roads up. There's I-15, which is the major mm-hmm. corridor that hits Salt Lake. And over on the west side, there's Redwood Road – which kind of goes up straight, connects with uh, Bangator, and which hits the airport and that kind of stuff. And where I live at the top of Lehigh is right in between those two. So if there's an accident on the freeway, I can take Redwood. If you know the opposite is true, I can go the other direction. It's kind of kind of nice. Yeah, the mountains up there. The mountains are beautiful. The Wasatch yeah. Mountains. It's fabulous. every time I if, if folks that I haven't seen it, and I actually have a bunch of pictures like out on my Instagram when I walk the dogs. Like every day, you know, walking the dogs before the sun comes over the top of the Wasatch Range. I mean, it's just beautiful. Just, just so beautiful. And, uh, yeah, we were just up in Heber. We went up to, uh, what is it? Uh, I, get, I keep thinking Deer Valley. It's not. It's Deer Deer Creek Reservoir. Just right up, yep. uh, you know, right there. And, uh, and did uh, water skis and or the, uh, you know, it's a lot of, so anyway. All right, one last question before you jump off. Let's see. Um, uh, Abhishek, okay. Abhishek says, uh, has anybody experienced below issue turned on new Teams meeting experience for one user? After that, she's not getting an option to add any participants to meeting or call as well. In old meeting experience, she still has options to add participants to a meeting or call. Don't know what's changing after turning on that option. Um, tried clearing all teams cache, even tried to reinstall teams, uh, but still the same issue. So I don't know if, there, if there's a disconnect with the new teams meeting experience, if everybody else is still on the old. I don't. Yeah. Um, a problem. Are they seeing, so in, in your teams meetings, I would say in the top left hand corner, you have this button that says preview. Are they talking about that feature or are they talking about like signing up for teams in the like the beta early ring experience because those are two different things pre-existing meeting that they're trying to add people or to or remove people from that pre-existing meeting okay i just had to to, uh, with our company uh, meeting that we do every other free week on friday i just had to add to sales people uh, to the meeting invitation and there was not an add people button what there is is a window uh, and you click in the cursor and you start when you click click in the window you get a cursor and then you start typing a name oh and okay. then it'll resolve it, it'll that, identify them yeah and that's that's the same same way of adding anybody to a team basically you say add and add a new member and it brings up a thing and it says Give me an email address or a username or something, and you type that in, and then it gives you what it thinks as suggestions, and you can just select that, which is exactly how I did it with these two people. As my memory serves on the old experience, there was a an add members or modify members or some other such button. Which is kind of a um, standard know, way that you do that across I've other apps. Yeah. Yeah, yeah sorry, Hal. Yeah. I, I seem to recall yeah, I mean, you talking yeah, about I mean, that. I mean, usually if you think about meetings with Outlook, like if it's an established meeting, you have to kind of forward it to new members. You can edit the meeting 
and add a new person, then it sends an update to everybody as opposed to just a direct forward. And I, I, I don't, I can't recall how Teams well, does it. I, if you do it, I mean, that's the other answer is that, you know, you can, um, as you said, you can forward it to those individuals in Outlook. If you go in and if you're the owner of the meeting uh, and do it within Outlook and you uh, you know, double click, open up the, the meeting window and add users, you're usually prompted standard Outlook behavior, whether you want to send it just to those people that are newly added or everyone. Only if you edit the body, the text uh, in the meeting, does that automatically send to everyone, which, mm -hmm. you know, I wish that you could go in there and update that for new and it didn't force uh, you to resend that to everybody. Does anybody else get annoyed by that? Yes. It should just yeah. automatically update that in their calendars without me having to push it to them. It's the cloud, people. Why are we still relying on content yeah. to be pushed via? Well, if I'm just changing, if I'm just cha like you say, if I'm just changing the text. If I'm changing the time of a meeting, then yes, right, absolutely, everyone should get notified. But right. If I just modify the agenda, all right, no problem. Should yeah. not be an issue. Yeah. I guess because they could be, you know, online, pull down, and update. You know, it has to kind of prompt them, like, hey, there's been a change there. But I'm just saying, no, it's just lazy. Like, yeah. <laughs> it, it, yeah, the technology is lazy. I like that. Uh, all right. Yeah, we're just over, uh, Neil. If you've got a drop, but I, I'm okay for a minute or two. I will. I, will, I am going to have to drop in a second. Yeah, no worries. Uh, as long as they have you. Oh, hey, there is a question here about backup. Um, so this is in the Office 365 community. I guess I should look really quick and see if there's any. Does it look like any questions have been? posted over i'm just going to check in my feed as well because questions can be asked and if it's on my feed or in the watch group feed okay i don't see any other questions so feel free to, to type in some questions and we'll try and get to them um but uh where did it go? i'm, I'm go? still like, i'm not getting anything from the dl by the way just so you know i don't know whether i'm in there oh i because i haven't added you yet so i i need oh. to it's on my Thank list you very much yes <laughs> It's all right. It's, it's been quiet. So it's, you know, nobody said we've been using it to send stuff to each other. Um, so Kadir says, uh, hi, I have a question about backup. Uh, how do you backup SharePoint and OneDrive to a server on-prem? So assumption there is SharePoint on-premises, oh, sorry, online. And OneDrive obviously is generally online. So if you're backing that up to on premises to a server, there's a number of ways you can do that. You can use a sync client to do it, but that tends to be a single individual user experience. Mm -hmm. If you want to do it from a, you know, I want to back up this entire SharePoint on online site collection to a location on premises, then you need to look third party. Veeam, bunch of other vendors. Um, I, I hesitate to say which one's best because I don't know. Um, but there's a bunch of other vendors that provide backup solutions for that. So let's name the other big three, of course. There's a there are a bunch of them out there. But, um, Avpoint has a solution. If you have other Avpoint tools in there, um, Quest and Metalogix, the mm -hmm. Quest tools, um, ShareGate has their tool as well. Um, yep. So I'm absolutely I'm absolutely not advocating one over the other. That's just the one that sprung to mind. Yeah. So. Well, I always, yeah. I, I, I always remind out, you know. folks too, to, because your organization may already have some of those licenses in place. So to go and ask around. Yep. Ask around, talk to people, work out what's best for you. And um, you know, there's no, I, I would say there's no one solution generally better than any other. Um, it's about what works best for you. Uh, all right. And somebody else is, uh, Tony has a question. Uh, it says, recently discovered that when forwarding emails to, uh, in Outlook, the body of my email disappears and is replaced with a few Chinese looking characters. Uh, and he's got uh, attached, which I'm not going to click on stuff. Um, I've run McAfee and have found no viruses at work. Does anybody have any advice on how to resolve the issue? So, in Outlook, trying to forward emails. 
And it's... So I would, I would, yeah, I would start... I mean, obviously, I'm going to put my... You know, I've been an engineer for a long, long time. So my first question is, does it only happen to him in his organization? Or does it happen to everybody? My second question is, is he using Outlook or is he using a different mail client? My third yeah. question is, I guess my third question is kind of a little bit different in terms of, has he spoken to the administrators of his exchange environment to to see if this is a, this is common or if, I guess that's coming back to the first question really is it only him? Um, I would go down that path for sure. If it's something that's just only affecting him, then you, maybe you need to think about your laptop. Something's wrong with your laptop. Like there's a there's a, some malware installed or something on those lines. That's a very Chris. weird scenario. Yeah, Hal, have you run into that? Yeah, there was something about that. It was a long time ago. Uh, that I'll have to research. Um, yeah, there's a, and by the way, I, you know, I'll move it over here so you can kind of see in the in this in the stream. But here was forwarded across. It's got some attachments, and there's the these uh, you know characters that it's replacing the body of his email. Now somebody responded and said that uh, um, kind of on your point. You know, rather than, you know, they're looking at it from the laptop, the computer standpoint, um, saying um, go in and set up a new pro profile and re-add the account and see if that behavior remains. If there's just some glitch in the matrix or something associated to that. I can't that remember if it was something to do with locale settings or, or what exactly. I've got to go consult Diane. I so I I, I would I would question the profile thing because if I knew there was a profile on my laptop that was behaving normally and a profile laptop computer whatever like or and a profile that was behaving abnormally I would not want that profile on my laptop on my machine yeah I would want that, I would want that gone yeah so that at that point I'm thinking if I don't understand what this problem is and my security people can't help me understand what that problem is. My, to Hal's point, you no know, locale, um, time zone, all that kind of thing can't help me. I'm sorry, I'm just going to pay for my machine and start again. It's it's a drastic approach, very very drastic approach. But for me, it, it's the approach that I would I would absolutely take. And I, and I think about it. It's easier for me to say that because, in my scenario. You know, obviously working for Microsoft makes things a little bit easier. I can literally, in three buttons, reset my machine back to a factory install of Windows, and Autopilot just does its thing. Everything comes down just fine. So it's easy for me to say that. It's not as easy for someone else who may be in a, a, a more challenging situation. So I understand that completely. But there's I would be very, very on, that on, on mm -hmm. Google. There's, there's it's it's a fairly appears to be quite a people suffer from that hmm. uh, because I find uh, questions on it in the answers forum, in the TechNet forum, uh, SpiceWorks forum. Yeah, that's interesting. And it is a it's an encode appears to be an encoding thing. Hmm. Uh, That, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, you know, uh, and, and and I get your your perspective, Neil, too. Especially if it's if it's something that you know potentially that you've been hacked, that kind of thing. If you go to that drastic measure, uh, if, if other methods are not working, um, one of the things that my first thoughts was is this happening in just uh, is it is this behavior happening in the. Uh, uh, the, the web application or the desktop client, mm -hmm. if it's, That's a good if call. it's happening in both places, then I would, because that would indicate, hey, there's a problem with the desktop application and reinstalling it's not fixing it. There's just something off about that. But if you're seeing it in both locations, then that to me logically would indicate it's something bigger than, you know, Outlook application. Yeah. I especially so I yeah I, I like that idea actually try it in the desktop app try it in the web browser on your laptop try it in the web client on your phone yeah. see if it behaves the same way 
then at least if you then have to raise a support ticket, you have, you know, you have a, a, a degree of, of evidence, a degree of information to provide to support to help them help you. Agreed. I'm going to add this here. I will paste the link into what Hal shared uh, for that Windows Bulletin into the feeds. There we go. If anybody is uh, running to that and has a different, you know, answer for that, you know, please let us know. Um. Uh, and, hey, uh, Neil, do you have any, while well, we have you, has there been any update that you're aware of about the, the new Microsoft Learning app in Teams? I know it's not available yet. Um, I, I just know that it's forthcoming. A lot of questions people have asked about that. I've seen that in multiple locations. I want to know, too. I think it's, uh, I, I'm excited to see it. Yeah, I've heard about it, and I've been on a few calls about it, but I really don't have anything that I could give you a kind of a concrete response to what it's going to con what it's going to contain when it's going to be released i know the learning team we've we've done a you know be, so behind the scenes we've done a bunch of changes this year with the, even the team i work in and the azure side we've done a bunch of changes in terms of how we're doing all our enterprise skilling initiatives all of our microsoft learning platform it we're trying to make it more accessible um and i think probably don't 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 judge me on this one but um cheaper easier for people to access um but I, i've not seen really seen anything so far on the actual channels that it's going to go through so as an mvp you probably see more than i do if i'm being honest <laughs> yeah i've not seen anything really through the mvp i know over in the rd it was it came up somebody asked a question on one of the rd lists and I was just looking for the quick email here to find, uh, I don't see it, um, the responses, because that list gets very active very quickly and got buried. Uh, oh, here it is. Um, uh, yeah, uh, Kurt K responded and pointed us to uh, the owner of that. So there's a, an RD discussion that's being set up. I've not gotten a notification around it yet, so I don't know when we're going to do that. So. Um, but uh, I regional, oh, regional director, right? Yeah, the regional director. Okay. So yeah, for those that that don't know, um, yeah, I just got renewed. So it's uh, yeah, we 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 get uh, it, it's sometimes a little more you know, inside view into things than uh, some of the MVPs, but it's uh, in in certain areas. But it's yeah, I I'm just I'm reading through here. I don't think that there is a date around it. So I. I think it's this fall. I think they're saying just fall, generically when that's going to be available. But yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm so, keen so, on seeing that. Since I moved out of SharePoint into Azure, they don't. They, they I'm, I'm like anathema, anathema to them. I'm like, they don't, don't talk to me anymore. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, I mean, there's really cool stuff, and and there's a great comment that uh, Caruana responded to this. Um, saying that, again, the app you're referring to is not yet out. Um, it pulls content from LinkedIn Learning. What's great about the, the app is you can actually, as an administrator, you can go in there and uh, for your organization uh, set up you know, uh, content that's coming from LinkedIn, from third-party sources that you have licensed, from internal materials. And so you can really go in and curate um, the, you know, I think it's leveraging uh, the the yeah, she says it's called Microsoft 365 Learning Pathways. Um, oh no, yeah. that's well, yeah, the Learning Pathway stuff that that's out there. But anyway, yeah, there's uh, to have the Teams app and to automate it in that way through the Teams experience is going to be a big deal. So a lot of people are interested in that. But the of course the Learning Pathways is is free and available. If you go out to adoption.microsoft.com, you'll be able to find more information about what's out there today. Yeah, Caruana says it's on adoption.microsoft.com and it's the second carousel item. Uh, yeah, so. Well, if Caruana says it, it's probably true. <laughs> no doubt with with her, her authority there. I would also say just, just generally bringing something to the table here. 
you know, Microsoft has a platform which we refer to as the Enterprise Skilling Initiative. I don't know if that is oh yeah, to that's yourselves. right. Yeah, and, uh -huh. and and customers customers should absolutely if they if they have an account team if they have a a, a contact within any of the sales teams at Microsoft, think about that the the ESI program when we like, like let me say let me give you an example. I'm going to find the link I'm, when we're I, talking. So okay, yeah, I'm, I'm working. I'm 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 working with a number of customers right now. I won't say who they are, but we're doing large scale migrations of on prem or from other cloud providers or from other hosting providers into Azure. Right, that's the work I do these days. And as a part of that program, we provide for completely free about one hundred five to one hundred ten thousand dollars worth of enterprise skilling. And that's across the whole Azure stack, right? But not just the Azure stack, it's Microsoft stack. So if you want to do mix of Azure and Office 365, M365, we support all of that. So anyway, I don't want to get into a sales pitch because that's not my job. <laughs> that's not what yeah. I do. But just just I think for anyone out there listening should should be aware of that. There's a there's a ton of stuff that you can get for you know, working with your account teams, working with Microsoft, there's a there's a bunch of stuff out there that you can work with. I've got a, on the live stream here is it's the Brad Smith article from June 30th. Mm -hmm. Microsoft launches initiative to help 25 million people worldwide acquire the digital skills needed in a COVID-19 mm -hmm. economy. And so they put funding and resources around it. So that's that's it. I put, pasted the link in there. You can go take a look at it. Yeah, that, that was great. Yep. They did that. So... Yeah, I keep talking to my my kids. I've got you know three that are in college right now, and and uh, it was sharing with two of them that are interested in some of the uh, the tools. Yeah, I've got one that already has her master's degree. She's done for now. Whether she does her PhD later, I don't know. If she wants to show me up, there's yeah, you know, whatever. Well, yeah, but, um, I'm trying to <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird. I'm I'm about to sign up for a master's in. Um, uh, cybersecurity. Oh, I nice. already have my I already have my PhD, but I want to do something else. So I'm like, okay, what can I learn next? <laughs> well, I'm queued up in the fall for uh, uh, web development. Uh, so I'm going after a certificate. So I'm I, I like the you know honestly, if I won the lottery and never had to work uh, again, I just go to school full time. Yeah. I just absolutely love reading, learning. The you can't be, can't be learning. It's all about learning. Fantastic. All right. Um, yeah, so just if I suddenly disappear from the community, either I've won the lotto. And the fact <laughs> that I don't gamble and I don't ever buy lottery tickets, statistically, it doesn't really decrease my chances by much of ever winning. <laughs> so, true. you know. Well, I, if I, I could, ever win, Christian, I'll buy you a beer. How's that? Well, I don't drink, so. <laughs> oh, all right. But, I'll, I'll lemonade. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Uh, but uh, yeah, it'll be. Yeah, just yeah. Feel free. We go out to lunch. That uh, yeah, just just allow me to supersize. That that'd be nice. Well, if I win, if I win five hundred million dollars, I will buy you the best steak you've ever had in your life. How's that? Oh, that that sounds great. <laughs> Excellent. All right, guys. Uh, I am gonna have to drop though. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, no worries. Thanks a lot for joining. I know it's been a few weeks since I've been on, but I'm glad I made both sessions today. Yeah, no um, worries. Be, we'll be back next week. As you know, yeah, you've got your calendars. Come as often as for long as you can. I will. But add right. me to that DL, please. Oh, yeah, I will. I'll do that. All right. Okay. Thanks a lot. Take care, Christian. Take care, Hal. And, and Sean, I know you're out there somewhere. Maybe he's out there. <laughs> Take care, guys. Bye. Bye. Ciao. Uh... All right, let's see. Um, so just looking to see if there's any other questions. I don't see anything that's been posted. Um, let me see if any other questions that I missed or anything new. Let me refresh on this. Do, 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 do. Um, I don't see any other new questions. I think we've got it covered. I'm, I'm hitting, I'm running into the questions that we've already covered 
um, <laughs> this evening and this morning. Um, so in our remaining 10 minutes, Hal, what else can we talk about? Well, I don't know. The only uh, the only thing that I've seen of any noteworthiness is the number of um, reports from well, some in the MVP forums that I've said I visited, and some in other places indicating that the uh, um, 2004 Windows update does not go well with surfaces. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't know what that's all about, but I've seen five or six or seven people with with surfaces uh, pretty much indicating it bricks them. And they have to go through all kinds of gyrations, basically cleaning everything out and reinstalling for reinstall reinstalling from from downloaded media in order to get the thing to fly with 2004. Wow. I don't know. I've yet to experience anything along those lines because, uh, well, my uh, my little old Surface 5 here is is is. Uh, whenever I go to update Windows Update, it keeps telling me, "Well, it's coming," and that's that's about as far as that goes. It's it's coming, and uh, well, under the circumstances, if it's going to blow the poor surface up, I'm, I'm happy with it to stay that way. Yeah. But uh, <clears throat> no, I don't have any more information on it than that. I just uh, the, the, yeah, I've seen some of those emails. emails. I've seen some of the uh, the dialogue in various forums. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, my I've got my. Surface Pro, is that a four, a three? I don't know. I've got an older one. This is working fine for me. No, no problems. And that's that's on the this year's update, the two double four. Uh, I would go back and and check. It should. Oh, oh Sean's here. Let's see, Sean, fresh from his nap. <laughs> You're still on the phone with them. Yeah, I'm trying to get my IP address back. Oh, brother. What'd you do? <laughs> uh, that, that's a Tommy Boy even... quote. <laughs> Everybody bent back the door of his car, David Spade's car, so he quickly puts the door on there. David Spade goes over to open the car, and the whole door falls off, and Tommy Boy turns up, yeah. What'd you do? <laughs> Exactly. It's an important American film. It's a classic. It's going to be studied for the ages. <laughs> yeah. It's like Citizen Kane, Mystery Men, and Tommy Boy. Three of the most important films in American history. And, and Galaxy Quest. Forbidden I Planet. finally saw the last Star Wars. If, if, you, oh, if really? you don't like Forbidden Planet, I, I mean, I feel for you. Sean, I mean, what do you that, think? That's every big star when they weren't big stars. Leslie Nielsen. Um, oh, gosh. Ow. Oh. And others. And many more, yes. <laughs> Sean, what did you think of the last one? The last Star Wars movie? I'm surprised they brought uh, uh, Palpatine back. Yeah. But good way to conclude it. You know, I, I've watched a bunch of these videos of of, uh, of people, of all the purists that are complaining about everything wrong with it and all that kind of stuff. I thought it was a good wrap-up to the story. Uh, I'm not that yeah. emotionally tied into the series, into the canon, and all that kind of stuff. Now, poke me with the stick around Lord of the Rings stuff. I will be very sensitive to what Amazon does and doesn't do. Uh, with that, my series. kids are having a hard time getting through those books. I, I just looked at that movie. Up, uh, you've got people like Walter Pidgeon, Anne Francis, Leslie Nielsen, Jack Kelly, Earl Holliman, uh, James Drury, all before they were even stars, really. And you look at those folks today. But anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'll shut up. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who I, I know. Leslie Nielsen. I didn't recognize. Maybe if seeing their their faces, I'd recognize them. Yeah, lots of folks in there. Hey, Sean, I did just get from uh, from Netflix. From, I guess got two DVDs in. I got the Bad Seed. So been in the mood to watch that. That's what kept prompting you. But I'm I may have to uh, add it to the collection. Well, I've got a boatload of DVDs here to uh, and Blu-rays to rip. 
So it uh, you'll see a bunch of stuff in a while. Very cool. Once I get things situated. Hey, there's one of these um, one of these uh, YouTube shows that I watch frequent. It's one of the list um, you know series on there. It's like uh, I'm trying to remember which uh, which company did it, but they did a uh, like top five um, top five sci-fi or time travel movies that are that they were not uh, uh, financially successful but are just fantastic movies and watch like the little like two three minutes of each one clips two of them i've never heard of like the 12 monkeys when it was in the list of five and mm -hmm. um oh, there's another one that was well known um i think that the other um willis one where it's got um um who's the young the kid that was in um oh, gosh his name is he's he's always on late night tv his song and dance kid but he was in tom Tra tom time travel movie with bruce willis where bruce willis was the old version of him and the young version had to oh, kill the perfect. old version what is it yes that was on there as well but these two that i never heard of them one of them was called predestination mm. it was like a lower budget thing with a bunch of high school kids that come across this i guess the neighbors stop responding answer the door they go in the basement and there's polaroid photos all like hundreds of them all over the walls and it it i guess it takes pictures of like the next day of the future hmm. and uh, and so in, in a bunch of antics that happen it's it looks kind of dark and looks really good i'm gonna try and track it down and the other one is a movie called time lapse hmm. so uh, i might um, track them down find out which services are on and ping you to add it to the server you know, yeah. Us, if we can find them, definitely. So, for those that know, it's like you know, Sean is kind of a, a a movie buff. I'm a movie buff. Hal, are you a? You're more of like the K-pop fan type stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm a Forbidden Planet type fan. Oh, okay, all right, yeah. And if you either have neither one of you seen it, then then I, I really go. It's it's on a half dozen different services, and uh, <clears throat> I mean, most of these people went off to have their own TV shows. Like Jack Kelly was was Bart Maverick in this in the in the TV show Maverick, and and Francis I forget she was a lady detective. Uh, James Drury was the Virginian. You know what they call there's Earl a you know, was, what they, uh, Hal, you know what they call lady detectives, right? Detectives. <laughs> I'm just saying. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, and one other one that I really like, and Hal, I don't know if you've seen any of these. I, Sean and I have talked about this, but the the Black Mirror series, I think I've gone through almost all of them now. Yeah. Um, they're fantastic. Really well done. It's kind of a, a you know modern day Twilight Zone. Oh, um, really? Yeah, they're really well done. It's there's every one of them, just about every one of them has, you know, big stars in it. They're written and produced by, you know, different people. Yeah, it's the Twilight Zone. Oh, nice. Yes. Still waiting. Yeah. Is, do you, is the '80s version of that? Is it up on Plex? It's the complete '80s series. I don't think it's up there yet. I haven't ripped it yet. Yeah, that's a that's a great series as well. Um, but yeah, so so Hal, I would highly recommend it. There's a uh, one of the best ones is with um, uh, what's her name? It's uh, um, um, what is that one? I'm trying to see it. Grim Reaper. Worst well, well, uh, this, uh, this is the old thriller TV show. That's classic. Uh, the, pre the prediction. Uh, masquerade. These are these are from a friend. These are all <laughs> good old-fashioned VHS tapes, Terror and Teakwood. That was uh, this. This stuff is ancient. This, that's that's Twilight Zone vintage. Yeah. I just uh, as I was shuffling around the garage, came a bunch of v across a bunch of VHS, and I've got the uh, 
what's that VHS C, the mini ones, the smaller ones. So I had like, okay. I think four different formats of tapes that I came across. I actually have reel to reel as well. I have of, uh, I collect uh, an artist, a singer, Peter Murphy, and I have um, a reel to reel that was sent to a Los Angeles television station for one of his videos in 1985, I think. And I came across that. No way of ever watching it. It, it might not even be his video. I mean, his package is such, but how am I ever going to know? <laughs> I'm not going to go track down and buy a reel to reel. Yeah, but but I own well, it. Part of, one I've got two. Mm -hmm. Part of the collection. Oh, yeah. One of them has actually got a tube preamp in it. Well, yeah, I, I've got a pretty uh, heavy tape collection too. It's all, you know, beta. Right. Oh, okay. Well, this is this is quarter inch audio open reel reel to reel tape. <clears throat> Very nice. Uh, the the old one is an A four thousand. That's a separate preamp okay. and transport. And the other the, the the newer one is an A forty ten, which is uh, integrated with solid state electronics. And TX were built like Sherman tanks. Right. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Is somebody in uh, college, my freshman year in 86, somebody had a reel-to-reel. -reel. Um, he, he was a uh, music production. I think he was composition. I think he was, I think it might have been composition major, but he was really into the, then the mid-80s uh, recording techniques and had a reel-to-reel. -reel. So, had a little a studio set up in his uh, dorm room. And an untrustworthy uh, roommate who I witnessed um, adding little recordings. Sure. <laughs> Un unauthorized. Yeah. Oh. So, anyway. Well, hey, we're, we're at time anyway. And, and, and while um, Sean on the phone makes for fantastic video, uh, <laughs> I think, um, you know, time of death. Um, 702 p.m. Pacific. So thanks a lot, Hal and Sean. Well, sort of Sean and Neil. And uh, as always, um, the, the recording, so I'll have this compiled tomorrow. I'll add it up to YouTube. Um, you'll be able to find if you go out to uh, YouTube uh, the, and search for Collab Talk, you'll be able to find episode 21. Uh, I will go through and timestamp every topic in both the morning and evening sessions so that you'll have a, a list of all the links. You can also go to buckleyplanet.com and I'll have a blog post with the video as well as all the link lists there and anything else that uh, that we've talked about. And we'll be back next Monday at uh, 8 a.m. Pacific and again at 6 p.m. Pacific uh, for uh, episode 22. So hopefully you can join us. Oh, and in the meantime, yeah. if you have questions, Send your questions to office hours at collabtalk.com and we'll try to uh, answer them during the week and respond back to you directly. All right. Thanks a lot, gentlemen. Absolutely. See you later. Sean, have fun. Continue uh, to have fun. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. See you guys later. All righty. Bye bye.